What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Pro Polishers Academy, where we help paint correctors like you turn your systems into consistency by moving you through the learning curves faster, utilizing formulas that work without fail. I'm Smitty and I'll be your lead instructor. Let's get into it. So this week we got a phone call from a local body shop owner that we've done some work for in the past and he said he had a client that needed some help and uh, the guy was there with the trunk lid, this trunk lid from the 67 Chevelle and he had it at another body shop. They originally painted the vehicle for whatever reason this trunk lid had to be repainted or was never painted before and they abandoned ship on this project. So this is something that could take just a few days, maybe even a day to paint and they had it for two months and they just basically left it uh, partially scuffed with 1500 grit. So the owner repoed the, the panel and uh, took it over to the body shop that we know of and they got in touch with us and the owner brought it right over. So to start it off, we're gonna hit it with some 1500 grit Griot's Garage sanding papers with a 3M foam sanding block. And then we're gonna follow it up with some 3000 grit Trizac foam sanding discs. And we're also gonna test out the high tech 3000 grit foam sanding disc. These are actually half the price, if not more, than the 3000 grit Trizac disc. So we're gonna give these a shot. I've already used one on a, a project recently and it worked pretty good. So we're gonna test that out. Then we'll go ahead and compound and polish and we're gonna jewel it with Car Pro Essence and make it pop as hard as possible. The owner said that he's probably gonna go ahead and bring the vehicle itself so we can just make everything match. And I told him that once we finish this trunk lid, there's gonna be a huge difference in the gloss. So I'm sure once we wow him with this, he'll be bringing the car in tomorrow after it gets out of the upholstery shop. So we've got our 1500 grit paper soaking in the water right now with a little bit of soap so we can soften up those edges and we don't leave any sharp cuts in the paint and we'll go ahead and get rolling. So before we get rolling, we're just gonna spray off the panel. Got my IK sprayer with some regular distilled water in it. Knock any dust off that might have fallen on it in transit on the way over here. So we don't grind any dirt into the panel while we're working. And then we're fighting even harder to get this thing squared away. It's already pretty clean, but we're just gonna wipe it down one more time and make sure we don't cause any damage. So the entire panel was gauging at overflow. So more than 50 mil of thickness between the gauge and the bare metal, which lets us know we've got a lot of Bondo. So even up here at the top of the trunk lid uh, in the corners, it was at 48 and 59, uh, 49, 48 and 49. So the whole thing is pretty much Bondo and it's a good thing to have your gauge ready guys make sure you have a gauge if you're gonna do any sanding have a gauge or don't mess with it at all unless you really know what you're doing but even still i don't think it's smart All right, so now we're gonna use the 3000 grit foam sanding disc. And we're gonna test out the high-tech disc. Said I'd do it by hand, but we're gonna speed this process up a little bit. Sometimes I can get wrapped up in perfection when I'm doing it by hand. I just like to see certain designs, certain patterns. So this is also artwork. So if it's art for you, you gotta know when to dial it back and just continue the science. So I'm gonna go 3000 grit, this is the uh, Griot's G9. We don't want too much throw behind it. This will be enough to level it out and knock down those 1500 grit sanding scratches. And when you're doing this with foam discs, you want to make sure that you keep them damp. If you soak them, they might not cut properly depending on the brand that you're using. But typically, foam discs do not 
cut well when they are soaked. They are for damp sanding. Paper is for wet sanding. Once we finished the sanding step, we compounded the sanding scratches out using Griot's Garage Fast Correcting Cream and a Griot's Knitted Wool Pad so that we can make sure that every defect came out and that it was as tight as possible prior to the polishing step. Once we finished the compounding step, we moved on to the polishing step and we used Sonax Perfect Finish with a Rupes yellow foam pad and then we followed that up with a jeweling step and we used Car Pro Essence Plus on a white Rupes uh, foam finishing pad and we topped it off with OptiCoat Pro and it looks amazing. So uh, as you can see behind me, the owner went ahead and brought the vehicle to us. He was so excited after we sent him video and picture of the vehicle. He picked it up from the upholstery shop and might I say the interior looks amazing, it's pretty dope. And uh, he brought it right over here to us. All right, so we've got the 67 Chevelle in and the paint looks pretty good. There are some defects in it for sure. It wasn't finished down properly. A um, lot of DA pigtails all over the place. We spotted some areas of Bondo. Um, there are some streaks in the paint just from us wiping on it, so you look past that. But we started on the front fender on the driver's side, got it cut and it looks really good. Now in here, right behind that rear view mirror, that side view mirror, all of that needs to be finished. A lot of DA sanding marks all around that, so we're gonna do our best to fix it. We don't do any disassembly here, so we're not taking anything apart, but we can definitely make it look better. We got a lot of damage going down that body line. And the majority of it, like I said, is DA sanding marks. They are DA sanding marks, so we're gonna finish that up. Eli's over here getting ready to chop on the door. And he's already cut that front driver fender, and it looks really good. Now, right above the lip of that fender, you can see some orange peel, so I think I'm gonna come back in there and work on that. But outside of that, everything is pretty flat. They just didn't finish it down properly. And you know, it sucks when something's almost completely done and nobody wants to finish the work. It might take you another day, it might take you another two days, but just finish it, your name's on it. So hey, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button for more videos just like it. And if you haven't enrolled in the Academy yet, go hit the link in the description below. We'd love to have you in the Pro Polishers Academy. We've got our Professional Polishers Handbook, which has everything that you need to know to be able to have a successful business in paint correction and ceramic coating from the technical aspect, understanding the PADS products, tools, and even the admin side, photography, pricing, you name it. If you've been struggling or if you've been thinking about getting started and you need some guidance, be sure to enroll in the Academy today, guys. We'd love to have you in there. And we also have our Academy Discord server, and you can get 24-7 access to us there. And we also have live Wednesday calls every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll have a topic to discuss, and you can ask any questions in relation to that topic or ask any question that you may have, period, about paint correction and ceramic coating to really get you on the roll. Hey, that's it for today, guys. See you next time. The paint is waiting on you. Peace.